Thank you so much. <laughs> Sarsef is really, really excited to be a sponsor for this film because it's such a fantastic representation of the work that we do here in Southern Arizona and then the impact that our students have when they travel to the International Science and Engineering Fair. So you need to be prepared for an incredible film. So SARSEF's mission is to create the next generation of critical thinkers and problem solvers. And we do that by working with kindergarten through 12th grade students across southern Arizona. So that's all eight and a half counties uh, that are under the Gila River. And we travel to the schools in order to make sure that we are making an impact so that students don't have to come to us and teachers don't have to come to us. I think that they're working on getting the, the PowerPoint up, but we'll just go ahead and skip through a couple slides. Um, so my involvement started uh, with SARSEF when I was a third grader, and it had such an impact on me feeling empowered that I could make a difference in the world. I continued on throughout the years, and as uh, Jeff mentioned, became a student at the International Science and Engineering Fair, which you're gonna see featured uh, here today. It had such an impact on my life, and I felt so empowered to solve different problems that I ended up winning a first place and two second places at the International Fair. <laughs> Thank you. And that resulted in over $250,000 in scholarships and prizes. So this is a really amazing opportunity that you'll be witnessing today. Next. And next. So why is SARSEF important in our community? Why is it important to have critical thinkers and problem solvers, and especially science and using science and engineering? Um, it's because over 50% of Arizona's current elementary students are not meeting the state standards for uh, science and math right now on the, on the state tests. Uh, meanwhile, of course, there's this huge boom in STEM jobs. Uh, we'll have over 500,000 new STEM jobs uh, by 2020. So there's an increasing gap in kids' uh, science and engineering skills and the jobs that, of the future that they'll need to be filled. And a big part of that is due to the emphasis on standardized testing. Uh, reading, writing, and math are really the focus, um, especially here in Arizona. And those are important subjects. But unfortunately, uh, the kids are being taught to think in terms of A, B, C, and D, and in terms of right and wrong, and not thinking critically and creatively about how to solve problems that they see going on. Next. So our philosophy is that we're not trying to create an army of scientists, although that would be great. <laughs> but we know that the students that we work with are not all going to become scientists and engineers. But the skills that they gain from doing science research are going to travel into no, any career that they choose. Uh, whether it's art or design, sales, management, they will know how to solve a problem immediately, think creatively about different solutions to something that they're running into, and just be better, more informed citizens. Next. So we accomplished this uh, by going out and doing, um, we have a three, kind of a three-pronged approach with our educational outreach program. Uh, the first approach is uh, to provide direct student uh, instruction. So um, last year, we reached, uh, we went into about 150 schools, um, impacting about 66,000 students across Southern Arizona. And when we're in the classroom, next, uh, we ask students, what is a problem that matters to them? What's something that they see going on in their lives? So at this time, I would like to invite our amazing students up on the stage. And I have some amazing examples of problems that some of our students have solved. So as they're coming up, um, I have to do a little bit of a spoiler. Uh, each of these students has been to the International Science and Engineering Fair, and we'll be asking them more about their experiences and successes about that later. But first, students, if you can just introduce um, yourselves with your name, and uh, then if you can say, uh, maybe pick, for those of you who have done multiple projects, uh, pick what your favorite project was. Just tell us what was the problem that you saw going on? What, what was your inspiration for your project? 
So my name is Cassidy Shamillard, and I'm a senior at Tucson High. I've only done one science project, and that was last year in 2018, 2017. Uh, so the problem that I saw was how large Tucson was increasing and how we're introducing native, I mean, sorry, how we're introducing non-native species of trees to our environments. They're becoming invasive, and they're overpowering um, and overgrowing native species. So I thought about how that impacts our environment, and that was my question. Hi, uh, my name is Emily Ignatoff. I've been doing science fair since fourth grade, but my favorite project would be when I uh, invented a system to help prevent cars from being washed away during floods, uh, so the system would measure how deep the water was to warn people in time. I'm Kara, I'm a freshman at Tank Verde High School, and my favorite science fair project I did was last year, which is buffalo grass is an invasive species here in Arizona, and currently it's very hard to eradicate, so I was looking for a more natural way to control it. So my name is Matt Fosdick, and I'm from Empire High School. Um, my favorite science fair was last year I looked at machine learning, and I was trying to get into it, but I found that there was a lack of information available, so I tried to, um, there's a lot of ambiguity, and I tried to um, increase the amount of information. Hi, my name is Amanda Minky. I am currently a sophomore at the University of Arizona. I did a project, um, the problem that I solved was lead pollution in water, and I did it using algae. So over the four years of my high school career, I built a system that uses algae to filter lead out of water. Hi, I'm Sylvia. I'm currently a freshman at the University of Arizona. So I went to ISEF in 2014, 15, and 2018. Um, so last year, I was looking at the optimal group size for decision making in ants. So um, there's currently like a lack of literature concerning um, how um, social insects like interact, engage in like everyday decision making beh behaviors. Um, so I wanted to investigate them to help explain some of the evolutionary behavioral mechanisms that have evolved for decision making. Uh, I'm Robert Villa. Um, I went to ISEP in 2002 and I looked at um, the amount of vertebrae that snakes have uh, in proportion to their body length and how that affects their ability to get from one place to another. Awesome. So as you can see, represented on the stage, we have a really wide variety of sciences and engineering's, uh, engineering uh, examples. So at this time, I would like for you to think about a problem that you see going on in your life. Uh, it could be a, with a family member. Um, it could be a problem that you're experiencing daily, like why isn't my alarm loud enough to get me out of bed? Um, it could be uh, a problem that you see going on um, at your school, students, um, you know, traffic congestion or uh, bullying maybe, uh, or for adults in your workplace. Uh, it could be a social problem or just, you know, something that's mechanical that's not working. Uh, or it could be a problem going on in Tucson, um, something that tends to come up quite regularly uh, when we do these kinds of uh, exercises with adults is potholes. Uh, this is a great example of a Tucson problem. Um, and then finally, uh, what's a problem in the world uh, that you feel really passionate about and connected to? So I would love for you to talk to the person next to you about one of these areas, and usually when we're working with the students, we do them one by one, but we're limited on time, so you can get, pick your favorite category and what you think a really great problem is. I'm going to give you about a minute to talk to the person next to you.
All right, so I've already heard some really great problems. Uh, whether it's a really personal problem, like I've been bitten by brown recluse spiders 22 times. What is it about me that they're attracted to? Uh, to a community issue, like why, um, you know, how do we better light our Tucson roads uh, since it's, many of them are so dark while still keeping the light low enough so that the observatories aren't affected? Is there a solution to that? Uh, I also heard um, something smaller, like uh, can't there be a taxpayer subsidy for um, solar panels uh, on personal homes? Two, uh, how do we solve global climate change, <laughs> right? So there are so many problems that you guys came up with. Are there a few more that would like to volunteer to have us work through? Yes. <laughs> okay, so I think I heard you. He said that in his backyard they have a lot of mesquite pods, and right now they're all just going to the landfills. So is there something better, a better use for all of those mesquite pods? They probably are, right? Oh, we've got, we've got a very excited adult in the back. Go ahead. I do greyhound rescue, and greyhounds have really thin skin, and that tears very easily, so could something prevent skin tearing? And then my partner suggested that elderly people have a similar issue, so exactly. thin skin in dogs and or people, how do you prevent it from tearing? That is a really, really great problem. Everybody was able to hear that one? Thin skin tearing? All right, uh-huh. How to get more smart people to stay in teaching. <laughs> And something I think that everybody really resonated in here. So, you know what? Why don't we solve that one using science and engineering? So, you know, it might not seem like that could be a science project right off the bat, right? What does education retention have to do with science and engineering? But we can do a really great study with it. Any of you guys have any ideas right off the bat about how we could go about solving the problem of how to retain and attract great teachers to education? <laughs> we could go around and do interviews of high school or middle school teachers around Arizona and figure out what their biggest, like why they stay in school and why they don't stay in school <laughs> um, in terms of teaching and then figure out like what is the biggest reason a teacher leaves the school. Absolutely. So step one would be collecting data, right? we got to figure out what is the current state right now. Why are the teachers who are in education staying? What is it that's keeping them there? I know we have some teachers in the audience. Uh, the teachers who are here, will you just shout out uh, or raise your hand and just give a brief why I stick around, even though it's really hard, Elise? Uh, I keep coming back for the smiles. She Aww. keeps coming back for the smiles. <laughs> I think it's the impact and the personal connection, right? But we, we would need to study uh, a large population to really make sure that we've got some valid data. And then for the teachers who dropped out, uh, figure out what was the, the deterrent. Awesome. So what would the <coughs> next step be once we had that data? 
actually pay them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably be a great solution, right? Yes. But what are some barriers? Funding. Funding, all right. What, what, so what are the barriers to funding? Shout out. <laughs> Political, yes. Politics, our legislature, uh, the way our state education system set up. What are some other barriers to funding? Value of Voters saying no to bonds. Voters saying no to bonds. So how can we make a difference with uh, either our legislature or voters um, voters saying no to bonds? Do any of you have any brainstorms about something that we could do uh, to try to change that? All of you run for office on the state. That would be great. <laughs> I, I do think that all of them should run for office on the stage because we do need more people in our, in our political system who are thinking long term and are thinking about the education of our future and how that's going to affect uh, their future voters and then of course long term with our country, right? But short term, uh, we can look at um, testing a couple different methods, right? We can look at some voter education um, styles that have worked and haven't worked and perhaps uh, after doing that research, come up with our own system of voter education and test it out and see, does this actually make a difference on how people vote on an education bond? And that could be a simulation study uh, that could be set up and maybe we could find a great way to uh, educate our voters that could be cost effective and used in Arizona. Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> That's just one idea, but I'm sure that there are many more. Like, what's the most effective way to influ influence a politician? Believe it or not, that's another thing that we could study using science and engineering. So um, to keep uh, going for our time so that we can actually see the movie, we'll go ahead and stop there. But I, I hope that you can, you can see how we can solve many of the world's problems using science and engineering as long as we're thinking creatively. <laughs>
and uh, as well as ethnic diversity. Next. So, all of these students do these research projects. They found a solution to a problem that's going on in their lives. They're feeling really excited and empowered. But sometimes the science process can get a little hard, right? Especially when you're collecting data. So you need a little motivation. And that's why we have the SARSAF Science and Engineering Fair. This year it's gonna happen March 6th through 9th. And every year it's at the Tucson Convention Center. So each school sends their very top uh, 10 to 15 students to compete, uh, equaling about um, 2,100 projects that were at our last fair. And that's everybody from kindergarten to 12th grade are represented here in this hall, each of them solving a problem that's important to them. So I'm gonna have our students come back up because at SARSA, we give out over $100,000 in scholarships and prizes to encourage students like these to continue on their scientific pursuits and to continue solving the problems that they were working on. Um, but also, we provide a really exciting opportunity, next, which is to travel to the International Science and Engineering Fair. So each year, uh, SARSA sends seven projects, uh, the students who did them, as well as the teachers for an all expense paid trip to the International Science and Engineering Fair, no matter where it is, to be our representatives from Southern Arizona. And as it happens, uh, our, st our students at SARSTEF uh, for the last 17 years have won at four times the average of the International Fair. <laughs> it is really amazing. So, um, I would love for each of our students to just give a brief um, sentence or two about what their ISAF experience was. What's uh, some a highlight from it? Uh, because as you'll see from the movie, it's really a phenomenal and incredible event. What I forgot to mention was it's, um, uh, there are 1,700 students from 82 countries at the science fair. It is truly international, and it is truly the best of the best who are there. I went to the International Science Fair in 2017 as an eighth grade observer. So I was just seeing what it was like to go to the International Science Fair. And it was a super inspirational experience to see people with the same interests as me from all over the world uh, coming to compete at the International Science Fair. I went as an 8th grade observer this past year in 2018 to Pittsburgh and it was one of the best weeks of my life. I learned a lot and met a lot of new people. Uh, I went to the, to the International Science Fair four times now um, and the best part is just the friends that you make uh, within the SARSEF group. You'll be lifelong friends. Um, you live with each other for a week so you really get to know them. <laughs> So I com I'm a three-time repeat competitor at science at, at Intel ISAF. So I comp I went as an observer in 2013, and I was competing 2015, 16, 17. Um, ISAF is an amazing, amazing experience. I had friends. I had made friends from Puerto Rico, which I saw the next year. And then when that huge hurricane hit, I was able to text them and be like, "Hey, are you guys okay?" And the biggest part that ISAF gave me is ISAF allowed me to go to college because I won a full ride scholarship from U of A at ISAF. Um, so ISAF for me has been very important. Going last year I was able to see people of so many different backgrounds all coming together from around the world. Again, not just um, wealthy white males that are just competing, so it was really important to see that. Um, seeing so many girls, seeing everybody, so that's what has impacted me most. Um, I think ISAF is simultaneously the most humbling and inspirational experience you could ever have being surrounded by so many like intelligent and successful um, other students who are just like yourself is a really incredible motivational experience. Uh, I'll second that. Um, I think uh, being a native desert rat here in Tucson, never having been uh, east of the Mississippi and I went to uh, Kentucky was really eye-opening 
I, I understood what green was. <laughs> it made me um, it made me want to travel and and um, learn from people of all backgrounds, and um, and so that was probably one of the most important uh, things that I got from that. Thank you guys. Let's stay here for a moment. I've got a couple more questions for you. So we have an incredible opportunity here in Arizona because the International Science and Engineering Fair is coming to Phoenix this May. It'll be here May 12th through the 17th, and it's not going to be in Arizona again for at least another couple decades. So I have a challenge for you next. I am hoping that you uh, will help me rally Tucson as a community to make sure that we are represented and we show that Arizonans value education, we value science, and we want to encourage and inspire uh, students like these. So there are quite a few ways that you can get involved um, in the International Science and Engineering Fair, as well as in SARCEF, uh, and to start locally and grow our own students. You can be a volunteer um, at either of our fair weeks. Uh, you can judge for us. Um, at the International Fair, you do need pretty high uh, qualifications. Volunteer, you don't. But at SARSEF, uh, absolutely anybody can judge. We'll assign you to a grade level where you'll feel, um, you'll feel like it's appropriate. Uh, you can be an advocate. Let people know about SARSEF and the community and that ISEF is coming. So many people are not aware about the International Science Fair and its incredible impact. So please share, share this experience with them. And then of course you can donate to either organization uh, because uh, both are nonprofits and both rely on community members like you. Next. So um, together we're gonna make the world a better place. And so I would love for each of our participants up here to briefly say, uh, what they found, what their result was for their project, and um, either what you're doing now in your professional life or what your professional goal is. So, Robert? Um, okay, so as it turns out, uh, the more vertebrae a snake has for its body length, the harder it is to maintain a straight line, <laughs> and, which is important. But um, I just, I did this project because I love nature at the time of, so I'm um, very interested in herpetology, our native amphibians and reptiles. And so um, currently the president of the Tucson Herpetological Society, um, and I help with um, biodiversity research in Sonora, in northwestern Mexico. Awesome. Thank you for making a difference to our Southern Arizona ecosystem. Um, so I found a medium-sized group, so in the context I was working with, it was for the sick ants were optimal for making effective, effective and reward-modulated decisions, so decisions where they were actively seeking out a reward. Um, and so I'm currently, uh, so like I said, I'm currently a freshman at the U of A, and I'm double majoring in neuroscience and cognitive science and economics, and I'd like to ultimately go into behavioral economics. Um, so I found that as we grow as a city, it's important to be planting and maintaining our native trees because um, they benefit the native insects and plants that are surrounding them. And then I'm a senior now, but going into college next year, I'll be going into art history and chemistry. <laughs> so I found that algae does remove lead from water and that I then was able to build a full system that was able to provide clean water for a community of 100 people in a third world country with no chemicals and no electricity. Um, I am currently a sophomore at U of A, like I said, and I, I am studying hydrology. Hopefully I will be also be a mechanical engineer here in the next couple years. Um, and then I currently have a grant to continue the work I, I did in high school at U of A so that I can turn this into a business or a nonprofit so that all of the awards, all of the money, all the support that I've gotten from ISEF and from SARSEF allows me to actually go out and help people, and that's the final thing. Uh, so I found that a specific type of uh, machine learning, specifically gradient descent, um, is best for large input sizes. Um, and I'm currently a junior in high school, and right now I'm researching uh, new solar panel technology. My results were that the shade provided by trees does not decrease the abundance or density of buffalo grass 
and I'm a freshman in high school, and I'm planning to continue doing science fair, and eventually want to go into career in science. Uh, I was able to successfully make a system to warn people uh, when washers are going to be too full to drive through to prevent people from having their cars washed away. I'm currently a sophomore in high school, and I'm working on an environmental study to remove microplastics from the ocean. Whoa. Thank you guys so much for being here. Um, if you want to go ahead and find your seats for the film, uh, I would really like to encourage each and every one of you to go out and talk to our students more after the film. They're going to stick around uh, with their ISEF project so that you can either learn more about the research that they did or ask them more questions about what their ISEF experience was like. Um, I hope that you enjoy this amazing film. You're going to see a lot of the things that we talked about in it reflected here today. Uh, SARSEP will also be out in the front um, to talk about uh, if you have any questions about our own programs uh, that we do or about the International Science and Engineering Fair. I'm on their uh, judging committee for this year. So uh, we'd be really happy to get you involved. Thank you so much.